Hi everyone! Welcome to the channel. First of all, I want to say thanks to Kate for hosting the Heart for Rocks project and for bringing all of these awesome female-led YouTube channels together in one place. I think that's just way too awesome. Thank you, Kate. Um, I am Allison from Prairie Girl Rocks. Some of you may also know me from another YouTube channel that I participate in regularly called Topher Spin Meteorites. And I want to, right in the beginning of this show, I want to say thank you to Sue and Topher of Topher Spin Meteorites for donating the meteorite piece that I then wire wrapped and then gave to Kate for this project. So uh, now that I got some thank yous out of the way, I want to say that when Kate approached me about doing a, a female focused collaboration that I instantly thought of my girls in the meteorite community. Meteorites, much like rock hounding, is a rather male dominated hobby and profession, but there are some really amazing women out there. And I want to talk about just a few of those women with you in this episode. So we're going to introduce a few of those women to you. Uh, first, how do I go from a mom with a boy who falls in love with rocks to the, a member of the Knowledge Bullet crew on Topher Meteorites to uh, an International Meteorite Collectors Association member. Uh, uh, my kid went on a fossil hunting trip uh, when he was in grade school. They, let, they walk from the school out into a neighbor's field and they dig fossils and he came home with a handful of stuff and he had all kinds of questions and you know, I, I had to learn pretty quick <laughs> what what we were going to do with some of this stuff because he had a lot of it and he just was so fascinated. So we started watching Kate from Katie Did Rocks. We started watching um, Theo Kellison and my kid was probably about 10 years old when he prepped his first fossil with a Dremel tool thanks to one of Theo's videos. So you just never know who you're inspiring out there, Rock Hounds, YouTube channel makers. You just never know. It might be some cool 10-year-old kid. So we've really always been an outdoors kind of family. Uh, we like to camp. We like to hike. We like to shedhorn hunt. And we've always spent a lot of time outside. So when my kids started hounding me about taking him out specifically to look for fossils and rocks, I was kind of all aboard. I was like, yeah, let's do that. So... Uh, it really didn't take long, and we were bit by the rock hounding bug. Uh, and, you know, my kid has kind of grown out of, of, of fossils and, and rocks a little bit, but he still likes to challenge, like, like, likes to make it a game. Like, let's see who can find the nicest, biggest piece of petrified wood today, or who can find the nicest agate, or, you know, he really likes to still outdo old mom if he can. So, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun for our family. Um, I got him a National Geographic kit for kids and a rock tumbler for Christmas one year. And uh, the kit was a dino dig kit and a meteorite kid kit. And so he excavated his own little dino and put it together. And then the meteorite kit, actually, it, it was a very small sample of, of a chondrite meteorite, which was fascinating. But it came with a pamphlet, an information pamphlet that I thought was almost as cool or cooler than the meteorite. And I started thinking about, I wonder how many people out here in, you know, the prairie of Montana are out looking for meteorites. Probably not very many. And it's, it's like finding a needle in a haystack or like, you know, Mission Impossible. I, I started learning, we were watching Meteorite Men, we were rock walking every chance we got. We were, you know, incorporating meteorite hunting into our, our rock hounding adventures and our outdoor activities. But I was finding a lot of rocks that, you know, stick to a magnet and maybe look kind of convincing. But I, I had so much to learn. And it's, it's not like you can just join a rock club or a meteorite club out here in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing here. There's nothing close. There's no museums even nearby that display meteorites. So learning meteorites was definitely a challenge in the get-go. And uh, I bought a rock saw, a uh, high-tech six-inch rock saw and a high-tech six-inch flat lap and started cutting and polishing some of the rocks that we were finding and making pretty jewelry into them and doing things like that and uh using the saw and the flat lap to get windows into the all of the media wrongs that i'd been finding out throughout the years so that's how i i got started into uh cutting and making jewelry um 
you know, and, and meteorite collecting, it was all by accident and because of my kid and a field trip that he took one time. So <laughs> that's a, a little bit about me and how I got into rocks, um, rock art and jewelry and meteorites. If you want to call it. Yeah, a piece. Right, a it looks like a sword. Piece. We should wrap it. And thanks again, Katie Did Rocks. Be sure to watch her final video to see all of our projects. And a very special thanks to Topher and Sue of Topher Spin Meteorites for all of their help in editing this video. I also want to sh there, talk about the show Meteorite Men. And I want to point out that it, the show was, it was a great show. And, and it looked like the, the guys had a lot of success in meteorite hunting. And they did. They had a lot of success in finding known meteorites. What they didn't find a lot of were previously undiscovered meteorites. As I mentioned before, that's really hard to do. So um, it was a great show, but kind of misleading if you're talking about meteorite hunting in, in your backyard for example, outside of a known strewn field. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Meteorite Men. We even have a show called Meteorite Men. So it, I find it really important today to, to highlight some of these fantastic women. There you go. As promised, I want to introduce a few of these girls from the meteorite community. First, I want to introduce Sue of Topher Spin Meteorites. Sue is amazing. She brings to the table a background in computer technology, sales, and marketing. She's recently applied her talents full-time to meteorites. She's in the process of building a new website called the Meteorite Vault. And her attention to details and customer service is what makes ordering from Sue a package opening experience rather than just a rock in a box. She sees what needs to be done to move forward and she tackles everything that she does with precision and determination. What she does behind the scenes of Topher Spin Meteorites is pure magic, and she is the glue that holds our girl group together. She adds a little of an extra sparkle to everything that she does, and that's what makes partnering with her extra exciting. Next, I wanna introduce Marissa. She's been collecting meteorites for a long time, and she's a wealth of information. Marissa also takes some of the most breathtaking pictures of, and with her microscope of meteorites cut into thin section. She, I'm excited for her. She's about to start selling some canvas prints, so be sure to get one. Sue's gonna tell us where we can find those here shortly. Last of all, I wanna introduce, introduce Jules of Space Jewels. And I wanna say that Jules has an eye for perfection and very pretty meteorites. Jules can polish a meteorite to a perfect mirror finish. Welcome, ladies. Thank Hi. you. <laughs> awesome. So, Sue, would you uh, help me out? Would you tell uh, some of our YouTube audience where uh, how we got started together and how uh, they how they can find Prairie Girl Rocks jewelry? Absolutely. Well, first of all, Allison, thank you so much for that great introduction. You're making me blush. <laughs> so as she said, my name is Sue Spinato, and I am one of the co-owners of Topher Spin Meteorites. Uh, our company was established in 2018, and my husband uh, operated the company solely by himself until the summer of 2021, when I quit my full-time job and stayed home to start selling meteorites. <laughs> so um, I but I came from a uh, IT sales career that uh, spanned about 20 years, and uh, I have a lot of uh, experience in like sales, sales support, marketing, accounting. Um, I did the training department for a while, customer service. Um, I was in management for a short time, so um, that's uh, the experience that I had. So this is uh, very different from what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a lot easier to sell meteorites than it is computer technology equipment, huh? A lot more fun. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be at first because I didn't think I understood enough about the science of it, but it is so much more fun selling directly to consumers, uh, spending their own money on something that they really want to buy rather than selling to, you know, IT executives and, um, you know, the IT department managers and directors, just spending the company money. Uh, 
people, it is not even selling because meteorites sell themselves. So it's really just kind of going on that journey with, um, you know, the person that's buying the meteorite. And I really enjoy working with newbies the best, you know, when they're buying one of their first meteorites, uh, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I love talking to the newbies too, and, and, and helping them not make, um, you know, make a mistake buying the wrong meteorite, um, helping them find um, a possible focus. So, you know, two, three years down the road, like a lot of meteorite collectors, they, they don't collect what they started with. So trying to help them hone that in early, uh, but it's a lot of fun. And just when they get the package, hearing their excitement, that's the best part. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all of us girls, we met on a, a Zoom hangout that we do weekly through the Topher Spin Meteorites hangout. And uh, we call ourselves the Knowledge Folide. And Sue, so you kind of work a little bit behind the scenes there and do some stuff there. Anything you want to add about that? Oh, definitely. Uh, so uh, the first time I met you, Allison, was actually during one of our live sales in October of 2021, when mm -hmm. we realized that Allison had her mic on and she didn't realize that we could hear her talking. And when that happens, everyone always gets a little bit nervous. I don't think it doesn't matter really who you are when you're on a Zoom call and you're like, uh oh, they don't know we can hear them. And it was such a pleasant surprise when we heard her just saying really nice things about us. <laughs> like, I like this girl. She's a really nice person. And that has proven to be true, you know, since day one. Allison uh, brings something special to the Knowledge Bolide Hangouts that nobody else has. Um, she just has a really very chill, laid back personality. She's able to communicate um, information that be, might be really hard for some people to understand, but she communicates it in a very simplistic way that everybody can grasp uh, the concepts that she's describing. Um, so yeah, that um, the company is Topher Spin Meteorites, but our weekly hangout, that's what we're referring to as the Knowledge Bowl Light Hangout. We get together every Wednesday on a live Zoom meeting and it's open, open to the public so everybody can join. And you can join in whatever capacity you want. If you wanna keep your camera off and your audio off and just want to listen that's fine if you want to start participating you just raise your electronic hand and we will call on you <laughs> yeah I know we've all really enjoyed the hangouts together um there's kind of something unique about our group and and uh how many women we have in our group I know when Marissa joined years ago she was the only girl in the group <laughs> and now there's <laughs> several of us and and then when we all are uh we all are International Meteorite Collectors Association members. And uh, not only that, but congratulations. Marissa is the secretary at the IMCA. Yay. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know that Jules, um, she's an, a member of another club. Um, help me out, Jules, would you? Uh, Global Meteorite Association. Um, are you as well, Marissa? Yes. Awesome. So we're... We're an active bunch of girls, but Sue, is there anything else you wanted to talk about about that? Yes, I did want to mention that the IMCA, the International Meteorite Collectors Association, um, like you said, it's been around for several decades. There are between 450 and 500 um, uh, members, and I believe maybe 25 to 30 females. And we have four of the IMCA member females on the Knowledge Bowl like crew. <laughs> So I think that is pretty awesome. I think that that's like the most dense gathering of, of IMCA women on a weekly basis that you can find anywhere. So yeah, yes. it's, it's a pleasure hanging out with you girls. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And you've definitely um, had an effect on my social life because I get to wear your beautiful jewelry all the time. Oh. <laughs> I incorporate it into all of my outfits and uh, I am so impressed with how your jewelry it started out great, but it just keeps getting better and better. Your skills, you're really honing those skills. Thanks, Sue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, speaking of skills, I think that the collective skills that we bring to the crew um, it's pretty, it's immense. There, we already have so many years of combined experience and expertise in meteorites, but I think that um, we all add a little extra sparkle to it. Um, Jules, like you mentioned earlier, um, her, she has a sense of perfection that is, it's unparalleled. I mean, she, we almost tease her because she is so, um, she has such a high level just of expectations for herself more than anybody else does. We love everything she does. And um, 
So when she it really starts doing the um, her cutting and lapidary work full time, I suggest if you want to get something worked on by her, you better sign up ASAP because she's going to be in really high demand. Um, and then Marissa with uh, her photography. I mean, these these canvases and prints that she sells are just jaw dropping, amazing. The colors, just I mean, it, the splashes of color are just beautiful. I don't even know how to describe them. You'll, she's definitely going to have to share some of them with us because they're so unique and not many people are doing what she does. And I wouldn't even know how to begin to start to understand all the camera work and things that she does and all the stacking. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's really, really pretty. And my husband and I are going to buy some of these and put them on the walls of our home because they're just that beautiful. I'm going <laughs> so. to as well. I'm going to as well. So I think that an interesting thing to bring up here would be the fact that we all have really amazing skills that we're bringing to the table, but that like, I know Jules and myself, we're not really computer literate people. And so it's been really helpful for, for you to be helping us bring some of our products to market. I don't think I'd be nearly as far along as I am right now without some of your marketing uh, strategies and your advice on how to make a better video, how to set up a better picture. Um, I know Jules has commented a lot that she has gained a lot of uh, uh, perspective on how to take a better picture and things like that from you as well. So I think there's Thank a huge thing you said there. Yeah, you do a lot of hard work, like I say, behind the scenes stuff that nobody really realizes that they're seeing until they're they're looking at a final product that's like scrumptious so <laughs> <laughs> well my husband definitely has a lot more he's a lot more tech savvy than I am but I um I do have a, a good sense of technology um but uh, probably a lot of my experience um you know doing um dancing and acting on stage uh, has definitely helped so it leads us to conversations of we're red lipstick on camera <laughs> But um, yeah, I and I really want to start, um, and I, I have started, but I've started trying to make content that is aimed at younger people, so we can show them that media rights are cool uh, <laughs> and help them get into, you know, having a passion for this like we have. But first, I want to talk about Jules for a minute. Let's let's hear from Jules. I'm Jules, Good and idea. I love to collect yeah. meteorites. I also love to cut and polish meteorites as a hobby at the moment. I am also wearing one of Allison's creations here. Wonder that girls. It's a meteor wire custom meteorite wire. It's a custom wire wrapped meteorite piece. There you go. Um, and you wore that. Uh, you wore that to the Tucson show, didn't you? And I, I did. I did, and everybody loved it. And they're like, "Oh, did you make it?" And I said, "Oh no, my friend Allison who." owns Prairie Girl Rocks made it and I absolutely love it it's my favorite thing I'm obviously purchasing more and it it is absolutely fantastic and I love the I love being able to support you as a woman in business and it, I've gotten a lot of support from the ladies yeah. in the meteorite community yeah and others in the meteorite community and it is a very uh, fun and all-encompassing type of a community. And I just, I, I absolutely love it. And um, everybody's just so supportive. And through the support of all my girls at the Knowledge Bolide, um, and then also the Knowledge other members of the knowledge crew i am going to be turning my hobby of cutting and polishing meteorites into a business eventually so i mean i've already started but you know word of mouth I've, for now yeah i've received one of your pieces uh, you know while you've received one of mine i've received one of yours with a space jewels logo on it and man oh I almost wanted to leave it in the packaging for a minute because your logo is so cool and you're um you're writing on your um COAs and things it looks printed the the handwriting is just beautiful and 
you know, I did, I did eventually take it out of the, out of the packaging and put it into my collection properly, but dang, Jules, I mean, whoa, taking it Thank up, you. like, to the top, girl, like, I, I like, Jewel, like, uh, Sue had mentioned earlier, if you want to get a piece of space jewels, meteorites, you better get it before she's in high demand. So. Well, it, packaging isn't my, my forte, it's, you know, cutting and polishing meteorites, so I learn from Sue, and mm -hmm. I, you know, get inspired by how she packages stuff, uh, just each little bit taking, taking a little influence off of someone's yes. you know, yeah like, yeah 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 handwritten thank you note or something that you like and throwing it in incorporating it into your packaging yeah yeah well yeah. Sue does do the best packaging so I you agree know. <laughs> well thank you so much ladies you're too kind I I wanted to say um you know Jules mentioned um supportive a few times and the girls on the knowledge bow light crew and some of the other females in the community that are um, here today we are I think we're all very supportive of each other and I can't say that about most groups uh, some of the girls tend to be competitive in other groups uh, it's not like that at all we are all we all genuinely get excited for each other's success and we all try to help each other and learn from each other and collaborate so I, I really love that about our community agree agree I agree and we're going to drop links to all of this stuff into the bottoms of this video, by the way, Space Jewels, um, tiny, tiny URL for Topher Spin, and we're going to put a link in how to get Marissa's thin section photography too. Um, and Prairie Girl Rocks. <laughs> and, yeah, and that'll be linked in there too, how to find Prairie Girl Rocks. Tell us about your saw. Are you getting well, any saw? The wire saw? Yes, yes I am. Will you tell us about it, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will. Tell us, what are you going to cut first? What are you going to cut second? What are you going to cut third? <laughs> I'm going to cut a lunar first. Awesome. That's going to be my first Thank cut of lunar. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I have awesome. two of them that are cuttable and they're, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. it, tell us what kind of saw it is you are getting. Um, it's called the gem slicer and uh, George Penna from Bulgaria he makes them it is a very specialized saw uh, specific for rocks um a lot of people will buy a wire saw and it's yes it's a per precision wire saw but a lot of times it's used for a different field or whatever mm -hmm. um but this one is more compact and very user friendly with updatable software which is a must and it, it's on wheels so I can push it to what part of the house I need it nice and the water's contained it it is gonna it is the ultimate saw awesome the ultimate saw. Awesome. congratulations <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. wait. I can't wait to see what you get out of there, out of that. Saw. I, I can't wait to start butterflying stuff in half. Yeah. The, yeah. I want a butterfly, thin, thin pieces that I, I just, I am going to make magic with that thing. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Oh, okay. Magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, it's just the, I, it just, there's so many thing more things you can do uh creatively I guess with a white wire saw yeah that's I'm excited I, I want to do some neat stuff you're gonna be so busy <laughs> I was gonna mention um so Jules don't Jules donated a meteorite slice to um Katie did for the uh we uh we heart rocks project and did, it yeah. is a very very thin smooth slice and just imagine that's just with the regular saw <laughs> right. uh, yeah no <laughs> I kidding. think this thing is like less than two millimeters it's it's maybe 1.5 millimeters so I can't even imagine how thin and delicate you're going to be able to get uh, the slices that you're going to saw well you got to start somewhere I started with a dremel 
And then I moved from realized the Dremel wasn't going to work for me, but it, 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 it does have its many uses and I love it. Um, a Dremel, then a tile saw, then my little six inch saw, then my 10 inch saw, and then now the wire saw. And boy, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, the right tool makes a difference. Mm -hmm. it, it really does. does. Yeah, it it really does. Does. These are pretty high end that you're waiting like a few months for it, right? For it to be customized just for you? Uh, two About two months. Yeah. It, it, maybe a little, a little longer, depending on supply supplies for building it. So it's going to be a nice, uh, <laughs> it, it's cool. going to be awesome. It's, That's cool. Yeah. Last but not least, we definitely, we've all kind of commented about how we are looking forward to buying Marissa's thin section photography prints and hanging them on our house, um, around our house. Uh, we, we definitely need to visit that subject. Marissa, what you do with your microscope is amazing. And you're not just doing pretty things with your microscope. You are actually deep into the science of some of that as well. And that just blows my mind because I, I, there's obviously really different avenues of meteorite collecting and hobby work. Jules is cutting and polishing. Um, you know, I'm wire wrapping and, and I'm kind of a budget friendly collector, you know, a single mom on a budget, but Marissa, what you do is is del delve deep into the science of stuff and that that isn't my area of expertise so when i see what you do it just it blows my mind so you got to tell us a little bit about what you're doing well thank you very much um yeah yeah no no problem um so first uh, a little bit about myself um i got into collecting meteorites in 2011 and that came about through astronomy. I first got into astronomy in 2010 and from there I just I knew of meteorites but I didn't know that you could collect them like a lot of other people out there. I just thought oh only the museums get them or like on the show Meteorite Men, you had to go looking for them yourself. And I was in a unique position where I thought, well, that's never going to happen because I am disabled and I use a power wheelchair and that's never going to change. And I've been in a chair since I was a kid. There aren't a lot of strewn fields that have really great terrain for a wheel, a power wheelchair. You're right. Yeah. For me, it just, it became a passion for me because being in a wheelchair, I, I can't cut meteorites. I can't polish meteorites. I, I have thankfully through the meteorite community, through a lot of support have gone hunting for meteorites. And they believe that I'm the first physically disabled meteorite hunter to attempt that. And I did find some successfully. And that was a big accomplishment alone. I would have just been happy with that, but I don't have the means or the funds to go hunting. So right. I just didn't know where I fit in, where I could put my skill set. I, I've amassed a pretty good collection over the years, again, with a lot of support, but I wanted to do more and I wasn't sure where I could put my talents and passion. And I knew of thin sections, I knew of microscopes. Again, through this amazing community, I was donated a few microscopes and one dedicated polarizing microscope. And I just fell in love. I took off. I've been getting a lot of thin sections again with big support from the meteorite community. And my situation has improved a bit where I could buy some. So I just, it's beautiful. This stuff is just extremely beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you you have found a meteorite in the wild. It was a known strewn field. Again, not quite the wild, but it um, yeah. that's something that none of the rest of us in this group have done. So uh, it's something that I think both Jules and I would love to do. Um, but I don't know if either one of us will get that opportunity in the near future. Uh, there, there's a difference between a hobby hunter, somebody like myself, where I just go out locally in my backyard, again, a 20 mile radius of my home for hunting and hope to, to find something that nobody else has discovered. And there's a difference in me doing that and somebody who is a dedicated hunter who is watching the, the latest falls and buying a plane ticket and a hotel room and investing a lot of expense into going out and finding an, a recent fall. Those are a different category of a hunter than me. So regardless what category we're talking about of hunting here, Marissa has in fact found a meteorite in a known strewn field from her motorized chair, which is just, uh, congratulations. I mean, I mean, this is the greatest group of girls ever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, this, this is an amazing group of women. We, we bring quite a lot to the table. Marissa, you mentioned that these thin sections that you're looking at with your microscope are like 30 microns thin and that they're, for, for those of us who can't imagine a micron, that that's thinner than a human hair. How in the world are you handling these and looking at them with your microscope? Can you explain that to us? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, they're between two petrological slides and I can screen share and show you an example or a few examples of what I look at and take photographs of. Yeah. Ooh, so here, that's so pretty. It, it's gorgeous. I, I love this, mm -hmm. this picture. Th this is a photograph of a barred olivine chondral. And this is what you see when you're photographing and looking at a thin section. Beautiful. Looks like an eye, <laughs> a green eye. An amoeba. Oh, mm. my goodness. And they're also wow. unique and different. Wow, Marissa. So you have a very thin, two very thin pieces of glass with an even thinner slice of meteorite smooshed in between of them. And you put them in your microscope and then how does that work? Light comes from the bottom? Yes, this is transmitted polarized light. You're beautiful. And this is, this is a porphyritic olivine chondral. So this is all um, pieces of olivine, some beautiful angular pieces of olivine suspended in glass. Cool. Gorgeous. And chondrules are very beautiful. They come in many more types than just these two types. And chondrules are a bit of a mystery enigma where scientists aren't exactly sure yet how they formed, but they do know that these little tiny spheres of silicate went through melting processes early on in the solar system, and they went through recrystallization, and they went through even other melting phases and recrystallizations, and they're just, chondros are very, very, they're very beautiful, but they're also hard to identify because you could have two or more mixed together. Mm -hmm. So con condors are just gorgeous and I love photographing them and we still aren't exactly sure of their formation process. That's fascinating. This is one of my favorite images so far and it's a very, very zoomed in photo of a barred olivine chondral. Because as you can see, there's more little bars. They're, they're very, very fine. I zoomed in on my phone at 2.6 magnification. 
and the microscope itself is at a, I would say, oh, about 60 magnification, maybe more. Mm -hmm. So it, it's zoomed in pretty far. Um, other microscopes that are better than the ones I have can do a lot more magnification, but this is, this is really beautiful. And what I did was I have these special plates called wave plates that shift the colors a little bit and it gives you different colors when you're seeing the thin section. So instead of cross polarized light, I put in a one fourth wave plate and it will shift the colors a little bit and completely change the colors of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And from there, I will take those images and I will combine them and make split images. And that's where I'm expressing my artistic side. Mm -hmm. And I bring something very different that I've never seen before in the community. And I was very surprised that I've never seen anybody do this before. So I just ran with it and I love making them and, and it's my way of making art. I'm a little bit jealous that I'm not looking down the the eyepiece of my microscope into this world, Marissa. <laughs> this is fascinating. I'm glad she shares it with us. I'm really glad. Thank you, Marissa. Yeah, no problem. No, I, I have immense joy making these. They're very fun to make. They they're they're a labor of love. <laughs> Right. Well, well, so they're, I... beaut they're beautiful. They really are. And I know your prices are so like unbelievably affordable. Like this is something that everybody can have on their wall. And let's talk about that for just a minute too. Marissa, you're selling these prints in, in, in hopes you've got a goal, a, a goal. And, and do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, um, I have a goal that I want to move to Tucson, Arizona. So you can be near the the Rock and Mineral show. Is that one of the leading inspirations behind that move? Yes, I, I want to be in Tucson. So I'm always there for the Rock and Mineral show because right now I have to travel and it is very hard and very expensive. My friends have helped me in the past. Like every time I've gone, my friends have given me help and it it's it's extremely hard and I want to live there. I want to be there. So I am there every year for the Rock and Mineral Show and I'm there with my community. And on top of that, Tucson is beautiful and a lot of my friends live there and I can go meteorite hunting again. And there's just, there's so much in Arizona that I'm just, I want to be there so bad. Yeah, a lot for a meteorite hunter enthusiast, rock and gem enthusiast. There's constantly something going on. It is really a hub of activity. So there are a lot of cool people that live in Arizona. Wink, wink. Yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we really wish you the best in that, Marissa. I, I think you're going to get there. I really do. These are, these are so beautiful. So, and, and what a compelling, what a compelling, uh, thing to support, you know, is uh, getting a girl down there and, and so she can enjoy her community and, and meteorites, her passion for meteorites. I think everybody should get behind that. If there is somebody um, globally that wants to purchase these, please just reach out to Topper Spin Meteorites. We will make sure that you get one of these. We can help facilitate the order without making a profit off of it. Like I want anybody that wants this, I want to make sure that they are able to uh, obtain one. So thank you, Sue. I really, really, really appreciate that. So another thing that uh, Marissa had mentioned was that when she had purchased her first meteorite that she was concerned about buying from a reputable dealer. And I kind of want to use that as a segue to talk about the website that Sue is building. So we all know, we all know, us girls know that you've got to be really careful when you're out there buying meteorites from, from unreputable dealers because you can you can buy meteor wrongs. I know that's a real thing out in the rock counting world as well, but it's it's a real thing in meteorite collecting for sure. And so uh, 
you know, Sue's been working on a website and kind of trying to find a way to help people get around that. Sue, can you tell us about it? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, scammers out there. Um, you can find them on pretty much all of the websites that we sell our products on. And um, that's one of my husband's crusades is to bust these scammers and have them shut down. But uh, as soon as you do, another one takes their place. So we try really hard to educate the public because the last thing we want to do is find out that somebody bought a meteorite from a scammer instead of a reputable dealer. And they're showing it off to everybody. And before you know it, they show it off to someone who knows their science and you know has a maybe a background in geology and they unfortunately have to tell them that's not a meteorite <laughs> that is a piece of uh, industrial slag or that's a river rock you are taken for you know your money so um that kind of is when there's a problem in a community uh, especially one that has dealers in it like us that sell products we decided um let's let's come up with a product that solves that problem so um, we we are we try to um, support other dealers. Uh, like I said, there there is competition between dealers, but also at the same time, we want a healthy, thriving community. And so you don't want a monopoly of just a few dealers. We want to have a wide um, ver variety of people to buy from, and a lot of uh, dealers have their specialties as well. So uh, my husband did start with a um, eBay safe sellers list that customers could go to to see if they're if the person that they were going to buy from is on this safe sellers list, because I would say, um, I don't want to say the website because I don't know legally if I can, but there is a place where a lot of us uh, started buying meteorites. I would say more than half the people selling meteorites are not selling authentic meteorites. So um, no matter how much we tried to get these scammers shut down, we just finally realized this is, we need to put our efforts into solving the problem. So um, for the last year, we've been developing a website called Meteorite Vault. And we do plan on expanding it to other products, um, some terrestrial rocks and uh, possibly fossils, but that is way in the future. We have our expertise in meteorites. So we're gonna just start with what we know that we know. <laughs> so um, the idea behind it is that we're gonna vet sellers in advance, uh, people that we've been working with and we've personally met over and over people that have stayed in our house when they're traveling, um, people that my husband has stay at um, the uh, house he rents when we have the big uh, show in Tucson, which is a the largest rock show in the world, uh, and it goes on for a few weeks. So he's personally met all of these people face to face and um, done business with them, and he knows that they sell genuine meteorites. And so our website, what we've been developing that has taken time, is that we're you know we're creating a transaction process that will automatically generate uh, certificates of authenticity, uh, so the dealers don't even have to you know write them out. Um, but you're as a customer, you will always have that uh, to fall back on and um, you won't need to, but um, having that certificate of auth authenticity really gives you peace of mind when you're purchasing a meteorite. And so um, we, you know, we all work full time. So uh, we'd love to have the site up, uh, you know, as of yesterday, but uh, we're working for a few more months still. Um, so keep an eye out for that. It's going to be I think uh, something that we haven't seen in the meteorite community before, we're going to have a section, obviously, for all the products. Um, as of right now, we're going to be selling meteorites. Um, we're going to definitely have a section for Prairie Girl Rocks and uh, meteorite jewelry. Um, I, I do some jewelry as well, but definitely not uh, what Allison does. <laughs> the custom handmade products are like the best. Uh, we are going to have a section for merchandise for all the different sellers to sell their t-shirts and hoodies and uh, beanies and things like that. And uh, as I said, we'll expand it in the future. We're going to have a section called um, Vault, uh, Meteorite Vault, but it'll be Vault University. And as of right now, the Knowledge Bullet crew helped us create about 20, uh, 20 second, uh, there are 20 second videos. We have about a hundred of them already. And each video um, covers a meteorite uh, term and you know defines it. So if someone doesn't know what a bolide is or they don't know what a palisite is, they can go and just play a 20 second video and someone on the crew will be explaining it. Uh, so it'll be very simple, it won't be a deep dive. Um, we're gonna have a section for the just the Knowledge Bolide crew where we 
uh, feature things, uh, feature information. It's not going to be static. We're going to update it all the time. We'll have things like, um, you know, Marissa wrote a great article for uh, Meteorite Times a long time ago. We're going to have a, you know, a copy to that, a copy to um, other hunters in our group, and uh, they're detailing their adventures, things like that. So it's going to be, uh, I, I expect to get a lot of hits on our site. It's going to be really interesting and exciting and uh, hope you all visit that site when we finally launch it. It is yeah, pretty I'm cool. Excited to check it out. <laughs> it cool. You know, and I gotta, I gotta give a little bit of a nod of my hat to Topher because if it wasn't for Topher Spin Meteorites and the Knowledge Bull Eyed Crew, we wouldn't all be getting together every Wednesday and we might not be as, as comfortable with each other as we are, uh, as yeah. familiar with each other as we are. And <laughs> I really do want to take just a few minutes to talk about Topher Spin Meteorites and, and what their motto is and how they're living up to that. And Sue, I want to turn the mic over to you for that. I know I felt a little bit funny earlier because I realized I mentioned his name a few times and I'm, I was thinking this, this is about the girls. <laughs> but um, it, and he kind of started the same way that um, I think it was Marissa that mentioned it. Uh, it wasn't like, uh, I've been married to my husband for about 17 years, or no, I've been with him for about 17 years. He didn't start off um, getting into rocks, uh, you know, earth rocks or anything. He was not never a rock hound. It was just one day he, I think he was online and he realized, wait a minute, what? I can buy a meteorite and own it myself? He thought it was only museums and NASA and government, like, you know, things like that. And when he found out that he could just you know, hit by now and have a meteorite delivered to his house, uh, you know, a few days later, it was all over. It was all over. <laughs> he did that in December of 2017 and the business was up and running by March of 2018. <laughs> so when the quarantine hit, you know, around like March, uh, 2020, it kind of changed things. He had just gone to his first, uh, you know, rock gem and mineral show in Tucson and that was a like a game changer. It was life changing for him. And then all of a sudden it was like, he couldn't go meet anybody. He couldn't see people face to face. He couldn't go to rock shows. And so that's when he thought, well, we need to do something to, you know, keep the community going, keep, keep give people a place to hang out and nerd out on rocks. And so that's when he started recording these zoom hangouts and, uh, that was about May, 2020. So he's been going every single Wednesday since then. And I don't know the exact number, but we're about up to 150 consecutive weeks without one week missed. And they've gradually evolved from very, um, they're a little bit funny to watch now, the, the very beginning conversations, there's no production value or anything like that, but he is now a little editing guru and uh, he brings in people from the community. We've had, um, we, we go live to people that are hunting in the field when, you know, a meteorite has just fallen, um, you know, Cranfield, Mississippi or Muskogee, Oklahoma. We have had a former astronaut on the um, channel. We've had, um, classifiers. We, we actually have a, uh, the crew preferred classifier, Daniel Shake, uh, um, up, uh, in Washington state. Uh, we have, we've had just a uh, meteorite men. We've had Jeff Knockin on the show, which is a great episode. I highly recommend everybody go view that one. Uh, so we've had a lot of, um, the most influential people in meteorites, uh, here and my husband will interview them. And, um, I think he just also provides a really great sense of community because, we've all become actually like, like true friends. Uh, you know, we are know each other outside of just meteorites now. And I think that everybody really supports each other really well. So, um, and then it's just for newbies, I would say, go check out the Topher Spin Meteorites channel. Uh, it probably is uh, the most uh, free educational content for meteorites anywhere on the internet. I, I don't know anybody else that's uh, created uh, hundreds of videos just based on meteorites alone. So there's, there's so many videos for people to learn from and it's all very scientific based. It's not, you know, it, it's, it's, it's real science. It is meteorites for sale and education for free. You gotta, <laughs> check, it out. You gotta check it out. It is really the best educational entertainment about entertaining TV. You can find about meteorites on YouTube. It's, it's, at, like Sue said, every week a new theme or a new topic or somebody crazy, wild, interesting that we get to interview and and ask all our questions to. So it's been, it, it is a great 
If you're not subscribed to Topher Spin Meteorites and you're interested in meteorites, you need to go hit that little thumb. You need to get subscribed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and we don't do it alone. We have people like Allison who contributes every week uh, when we do record. We don't record every week, but we meet every week. Um, sometimes we just want to get together and show each other our latest purchases. So, um, it's not a high tension situation. If you haven't been people, I find out all the time, people tell me, I've always wanted to come to the meeting, but I don't know what to present. And and I tell them, we're not letting you present the first time. Just come and hang out, come talk and be comfortable and get to know how the show runs. And then, and then you can start presenting. Uh, we, but we have an on-staff geologist, Mike Kelly, who does a, a meteorite 101, um, pretty much for all of our recorded shows. We have other experts uh, like Pat Brown. Um, he, we call him the honorary professor. Uh, and he always wants people to know I'm not an actual professor, but he has been collecting literally for decades. And he knows just as much as any scientist. And he actually knows so much that some of the, uh, one of the classifiers actually brought him in and they co-classified meteorites together. So that's how much knowledge this guy has. Uh, we have people like, you know, um, Chris Monk, and obviously we have Jules, who's on the call, who um, are really skilled at cutting meteorites and doing the lapidary work. Uh, we just, the, the amount of experience and expertise and knowledge that the entire crew has together is, it's mind boggling. I don't even know how I would express it or measure it, but uh, if you ever have questions, you know, come join the Hangout and uh, learn because these people are very open uh, to helping anybody learn about meteorites. Right. And, and that's important to note too, because when I first started hanging out in the, in the full aid crew, I was a newbie collector. I still am a newbie collector and I really don't have a big collection. So I don't always have a lot to offer and show and tell like uh, some of the other guys have got everything you can dream of. Some one person's uh, choice is to have a little bit of everything, you know, micro Mike has a little bit of everything, you know, or You've got Iron Man over here who won't have anything except iron meteorites. So it's so cool to collectively have the bunch of us. Or I want to just say it one more time. We've got Marissa, the thin section photographer extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Allison, it's, you bring more value to the crew than you realize. Because I will say your rock hunting experience actually, it is very significant because you know your local geology so well. And uh, so you're not just picking up things and wondering, oh, I think it looks like a meteorite. No, you know, and you look at it and you're like, nope, this is, uh, you know, I don't even know the names of the rocks, but you you can say this is an igneous rock and this is um, you know, local to this region and the few states surrounding, you know your stuff. And that is one thing that I think a lot of um, the new meteorite people, like they might lack in, uh, but you, you've done a great job showing other people um, how to really discern what you're looking at and that you bring just as much value as some of uh, these people that have been educated in in scientific fields that you know in universities I, you you actually bring way more than you know and you are one of our most valued uh, crew members well and I would not want to be the smartest person in the room ever how boring would that all right <laughs> you know well, something okay. to uh, your uh, look try to strive for, right? You know, right. obviously all of us are thirsty for knowledge. That's why we keep coming together and, and helping each other, you know, bringing up the latest and greatest news and meteorites with each other and geeking out on it. It's, it's a blast. I I'm so glad that I got to meet you girls there and that we get to hang out all the time. And I, I think, you know, I hope that in this recorded episode that we've put together for everybody here this evening or today or to this morning, wherever it is, wherever you're watching from, I hope that uh, we've we've done a good job kind of spotlighting each other's talents and, and highlighting each other's accomplishments. But I also hope that we've given new meteorite people, people who have just recently, maybe in this episode, learned that meteorites are available for everyone. Hopefully we've we've given them a realistic window into collecting, buying, and hunting meteorites. There's many different avenues of interest in that and and many different budgets and many different styles and many different, you know, everybody's got something different. But I hope that we have highlighted some of the things that we do and some of the things that we don't do in a really realistic manner here. It's not like winning the lottery. You're not going to go out and find one the first time you look. Probably not. I mean, <laughs> but 
uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So hopefully we've, we've done a good job and, uh, inspired somebody to maybe go out and make their first meteorite purchase. You, you buy one and it's kind of like eating cookies. You can't stop at one. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we've shown too that although it's a very male dominated community, that women are just as welcome and appreciated. Uh, I don't really know a lot of guys that uh, want to squeeze the women out. They're very, they're very open. And yeah. we all, I think, um, really coexist together really well. And I just see more women joining all, all the time. And I want to, I want to see that trend continue. Yeah, agree. Agree. Anything else, girls? I don't think so. Not that I can think of. I, and I do, I want to end on that. I want to say one more time, please go check out Space Jewels Meteorites, Microscopic Meteorites by Marissa, Topher Spin Meteorites. Go check out Sue Sparkles. I'm going to leave all of that. Prairie Girl Rocks, it's all going to be in the description in the video. Please go check it out. You guys, we've got awesome stuff to, to share with you. Power. You rock, Allison. You rock. You rock, Jules. <laughs> Ten- we <laughs> rock. You rock, Marissa. You rock. Yeah, you rock. <laughs>
I, I definitely like tech tights more after you you made jewelry out of them and like me too. I think because you were you were excited about them and I was like you know you're like oh I loved it and I'm like why you know but then like once I you know you were talking about it and then uh, I saw the the transparency and how mm-hmm. cool it looked I'm like yeah because you're going to be in diff- all different kinds of light when you're wearing the jewelry you know what I mean it's going to look it's going to have a different look you know all the time like like it just I don't know it seemed a lot cooler after that <laughs> yeah. yeah I agree I totally agree I'm not into tech tights or living in desert glass but they do look really cool wrapped in your wire. Yeah, it, it, I'm like, wow, I guess I like it now. But I would only purchase it, I think, if it was wire wrapped from you. I wouldn't. Yeah. 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 And like I I've always said, you, you made you made the cat turd one look like it wasn't a cat turd anymore. Right. <laughs> and maybe some of the rock hounds will be like, I gotta have it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. I remember when Topher went at one of his first hunts with the um, John Higgins had given him like this like metal detector, like walking stick type of thing. His meteorite stick, that's what he calls it. And he had this bag of stuff and he was like, I go, oh, did you find some meteorites? And he's like, no, I found some other things. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a bag of junk. I'm like, what are you doing with this all? And he's like, I'm going to throw it away. I'm like, thank God, dude. I'm like, yeah. you know, I was like wondering, I'm like, I was really hoping like, oh no, is he going to go hunting all the time? Just coming back with junk. We're going to have just boxes of it, but no, he tossed it all. Well, and it's important to pick it up because when you are out there hunting, you don't want to find it twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, true. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think at least Jeff does that too. He collects mm-hmm. everything so that he throws it away so you're not going to find it again. Well, and also if it's garbage, might as well not leave it in the in the nature, you know, take it out of there and throw it in the mm-hmm. trash where it belongs. Exactly. Jules, do you want to give a, this is the best girl group ever? bitches <laughs> 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 rule! <laughs> Sorry. Everybody feel kind of okay with some of that? I'm so glad you have a month to edit yeah. this. <laughs> oh, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, the ocean can kiss my ass. Yeah, the ocean can kiss my ass. Yeah, the ocean can kiss my ass. If you see something, say something. Come on and party tonight. <laughs> Sue, did you have some exci- exciting new news for us? I do, kind of, sort of, somebody else's uh, news. So <laughs> uh, speaking of the science, um, that we usually uh, look up information on meteorites in something called uh, the Met Bull. And technically that's just short for the Meteoritical Bulletin. And so this is a database of about 70,000 meteorites. They are approved and published. And what that means is that scientists have actually done testing on them from a variety of different testing, usually a lot more testing on like the lunar and Martian, anything that's planetary, because those share more characteristics uh, with the uh, terrestrial rocks. So we do more testing on those. Uh, My husband, uh, he actually has about 12 classifications in the Met Bull. Um, Obviously he's been doing this for five years. I don't have any. Um, I don't think that Marissa and Allison have any yet, but that's, that'll be, that'll be, oh, you do? How many do you have? One. (laughs) Congratulations. I I did not know that. So um, I guess it's just Alice and I that don't have any because somebody else is about to be published in the Met Bowl and that is Jules. And I knew she wouldn't mention it because she's very humble. Uh, so <laughs> we're very excited for her having this uh, new classification and um, and me just finding out that Marissa had one too. That That's awesome too. So Marissa, what, what um, kind of classif- classified rock do you have uh, in your name? I, I have an H5 Ooh. and it is NWA 14204. Mm.